everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to send out beautiful HTML email templates using SendGrid straight from your bubble app. Let's jump in. Started here, we're just going to create our SendGrid email templates directly from SendGrid. If you don't know what SendGrid is, go on YouTube and type in SendGrid or just follow the steps to sign up. So to create a email template, let's go on the email API tab and click dynamic templates. Then we will be taken to this page where we'll create a new template and let's call this one test five and create that. And then we can go and see that it appeared here and we have this template ID, which will be important soon. The next thing we're gonna do is add a version and you can either create one from scratch from a blank canvas or you can use one of these amazing designs. So in our case, I'm just gonna use a template to make it quicker and let's do off grid adventures and you have this choice here whether you want to edit it in code or import code or you want to use their no code design editor so i'm going to use the no code design editor um, but if you know how to create html feel free to go directly to code so now we can see that we have this part all set up and we can edit anything on it um, i'm just going to change the picture to my profile pic and it <laughs> doesn't fully go here, but that's okay. And then you can edit all the text. Um, welcome to my social page and edit it just like you would any other no code builder. And you can add a link to any buttons. So the next thing we need to do is change the name of the version. So let's call this version one and the subject. So I want to do here dynamic subject. And if I want to do that, I'm going to put in three curly brackets and I'm going to type in subject and another three curly brackets. This will help us make the subject dynamic. Um, and then the preheader, I don't want a preheader right now. Okay, so now we have our email ready. I'm gonna actually get rid of this picture and just keep it like this. And then the next thing we need to do is just save this um, template right here and we're done. We have our template all set up and we can go back and now jump into bubble and integrate this template. So in the next part, I'm going to go over how we actually connect these SendGrid templates to our bubble app. Now that we have our email templates set up, we need to go back into our bubble editor and create the database structure to actually hold these templates. So let's call this data type email template. Computer is lagging. There you go, email template. And let's create a data type called template ID. Let's make it a text. And the next thing we need is the subject. Perfect. So to add in the email template to the database, we're just gonna do it manually um, right here in the app data tab. And we're just gonna add a new entry um, you can create a bubble interface for this, but I'm just doing it manually for now. And the subject will be, um, call this test five. And the template ID we're actually gonna get from the SendGrid um, template page. And if we go here, we can see that the ID is over here. And, okay, and we can paste it right there and create. Perfect. Now we have our template in the bubble database and we can get into the API connector and connect SendGrid and bubble. Now that we have our template set up and our database set up, now we can jump into the API connector and actually connect SendGrid to our bubble app. So the first thing we want to do is download the API connector. We're going to go into plugins. And if you don't have it, you can add plugins. And I'm not going to do this from scratch. I'm going to actually just go through what I've built. And at the end of the video, I'll show you where you can get access to my actual editor. Um, so you can really see in more detail, but I'm just going to describe exactly how your thinking process should be and how I built this out. So the first thing you want to do is just create a new API name and I'm going to call this SendGrid and I'm adding a shared header. So once you create an API name, you have this thing called add shared headers and I just typed in content type, etc. Um, and the other thing you want to do here is authorization. You're gonna put in bearer and then you're gonna put in your API key. So you want to go to SendGrid and find your API key. And so it knows it's you. 
And the way to do that is if you go on your um, SendGrade dashboard and you go into settings and then you go into API key. So go back here, go into API keys. You can create an API key and name it and give full access. And then you want to copy that key that you get after you create it. It's a private key and paste it after the bear. So it's gonna be bear space and then API key. And then when you go down here, you're gonna create a specific call. So this is a general API that you're connecting to. And then there's specific calls within that. So the specific endpoint you want to actually send the um, email to is you're gonna change it to post. So you don't wanna do a get or patch or delete request. And you're gonna put it as an action. So you want it in a workflow, right? When you're sending an email, you want to it to happen in a workflow and the data type is going to be text and then you're going to just paste this um, url i'll actually share this in the show notes this is the endpoint and you're going to have a body type of json so here's where it gets like a little confusing is with json if you're unfamiliar with json it's just a way of encoding um, encoding uh, sending data between uh, systems it's just a standard way and essentially it's just telling us a table and nested tables. So just sell it, telling us what data to send between the systems. Um, so if you want to learn more about JSON, I recommend doing that. But essentially what I did here is I just used exactly the um, SendGrid uh, customizations. I simply copied and paste, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, the personalization examples are here. So it's docs and SendGrid. I'll leave this in the description. But essentially this is the um, the structure of how SendGrid wants you to, how it reads your request. So, um, and you can follow along here. You can just see it's from and brackets, template ID. And so this is just how I got the data. If you want access to my specific um, JSON, I will tell you how to do that at the end of the video. But for now, essentially what I did is I just took that template ID and in Bubble, a cool thing you can do is you can make the data inside of the template ID dynamic. And the simple way of doing it is putting these over here. So if I take this off, this greater or less than symbols, um, I can see that there's no template ID here. There's no parameter, but if you wanna turn it into a bubble parameter, you just simply add these over here and you'll be able to see that there's template ID down here now. And if I keep it private, I can only edit it in this API connector, but if I make it public, if I take off the private, I can actually dynamically edit it in my workflow. And I'll show you what that means in just a moment. So over here, I essentially took this and at, made all the email, everything, all the data that this workflow would need to actually send an email template dynamic. So I just have this template ID um, as a parameter down here. So I put it in brackets and then here it's just personalizing that template. So it's calling that template and personalizing it. And I made the two email and the two name dynamic two. Um, so the two, this is going to be some sort of email. Um, and, and I just went through all this JSON and I'm going to show you if you want access to this specific JSON, which you may, um, you can either follow along and copy it, or you can, um, at the end of the video, I'll show you where you can get access to copy paste this JSON and to see my full editor. Um, and essentially what I created was this really nice workflow that I can actually work with. So. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that the verified sender, so that needs to be, um, the sender you actually have in SendGrid. So, um, up here, if we go to from, we have verified, um, segment email, I got confused here. It should be verified send grid email. Um, and that is the from key. So that's who you're sending from. And if it's not verified on SendGrid, so when you signed up, you had this verified sender. Um, it won't work. So this has to be wisebubbler at gmail.com. Otherwise the emails will not send. And I would make this private so it's fixed. Um, and the next thing we're gonna do here is we have now, okay, everything should be private except for the subject that we wanna change, the template ID and the to, to our, the email we're sending it to. So now let's go back to the editor and go over how we can um, actually build out sending that email in our UI. One last thing before we actually jump in and create the UI in the editor is that you need to make sure the wise bubbler is filled out or your um, verified SendGrid email is filled out uh, manually in the API connector. And you have a real template ID um, in your template ID parameter 
and you have a real to uh, email in the to parameter or whatever you call that parameter, but you need to have a sender, a receiver, and a real template ID, otherwise it won't work. And then make sure your API keys are in there and then you can initialize the call and you should see this. If it doesn't work, it'll give you an error. So now we're sure that it works, let's go to the editor. And I built this just simple interface with a dropdown to choose template. And so I'm going to search for email template and I am going to make the type email template and current option subject. And then over here, you can type in your email and let's create the workflow. So when we click start edit workflow, we are going to go to send grid and send email, which is the call we created. And we can see that we have a dynamically, we can put in the template ID. So we go to drop down, um, choose a template value, template ID. And then the subject we're also going to get from that. And we're going to do drop down, choose a template value subject. And then the to email is going to be the inputs value email, right? Cause we created an input email. And then we are just going to reset relevant inputs. And now we officially have created the um, sending mechanism UI for the email templates. Now let's go test it out. So the last, last step is to test this email template and the connection to SendGrid. And so we're just going to choose our test five, which is the only email template we have. And I'm gonna send it to myself, wisebubbler at gmail.com. And if we go to my email here, we can see that it has been sent. It's giving me this warning because I'm using a Gmail on SendGrid, but you can see here that we have this template sent and you can use this throughout your app. You can customize how you store the templates and how you use parameters. One thing I will say is I wouldn't recommend doing the sending on the front end. Um, so I wouldn't do the sending straight from here, but what I would do is schedule an API workflow and do the actual um, email sending on the back end because I know there are some security risks um, to doing it like this. I'm no expert on this. I actually just learned how to do this for this video. So if you I did anything wrong or if you have any thoughts or suggestions, please reach out. Now you have my email, wisebubbler at gmail.com or reach out to me on Twitter at wisebubbler and check me out on DSO, which is like BitCloud, it's a decentralized social media platform where I'm trying to be a little bit more active, also at WiseBubbler. If you want access to my bubble editor and want to get, see this JSON and see the whole workflows um, firsthand, I'm gonna drop a Gumroad link where you can get access to this um, editor. And if you can, for some reason, get it from Gumroad, feel free to DM me. Um, otherwise, if you're interested in any more tutorials, please reach out. I'm more than happy to do more of these and thank you for watching.